Hi everyone and welcome to The Crows Show, brought to you by Chemist Warehouse, I'm Mark Bickley. And I'm Alana Smith. Well, we're getting to the business end of the season now, Mark. Only five games left until the finals. Yes, Alana, buckle up because we are in for a thrilling finish. Coming up in today's show. It's the skipper's turn to cop a grilling from Smithers. All right, last one, um, the mo. What's going on with the mo? But first, the coach's box can be a high stress environment, believe me. Today we can give you a rare insight into how Sandful coach Ryan O'Keefe and his assistants handle game day. Ryan was known for his competitiveness with the Sydney Swans, so how does he get that message across to his players? So how many touches has Stevens had? Like seriously? Tell someone, you've got to watch Stevens. He's getting outside, he's working yeah. harder than our boys outside. Yeah. Obviously, coaches' box can sometimes go depending on how on how the team goes a little bit, but I try not to make it that way. It tries to, we try to be really solution uh, based um, and very open and collaborative. That was good stuff by Hans. Curly, tell Shrew to go to Hans and say that's fantastic work, alright? He's working his ass off. Just keep pumping him up, alright? So reliant on having a strong, you know, strong synergy uh, amongst amongst the box. So it's obviously the assistants, but also the analysts that are in there as well. So they're sweeping wings, just yeah. trying to find the line that forward so that Schmidt can drop off. Yeah, so open the front up. Let's go at the front and stop it. Yeah. Trashing out a lot of things. It can a um, um, bit going on, but we're going to make sure that once the message gets down to the players, that it's calm, clear, and um, they can really understand it because the game's so fast. Their, their heads are spinning. Curly. Keep telling the boys not to live back, we've got to squeeze the ground. That role we're in that with the SNFL, we're about developing players and to be able to see the improvement of the players this year, uh, it's been fantastic. The, to see some guys debut in the AFL, it's, it's, been, it's been a great um, team job from all of us to try to get the players in that position. <laughs> The Crows clash with Geelong on Friday night probably had a little more significance than usual for young Tom Duday. A product of the Geelong Falcons, he was Adelaide's shock first round draft pick in 2015, having played just three years of football after switching from basketball. He's impressed in the sandful with his reading of the play and fearless attack on the ball. Shoulder and knee injuries delayed Tom's start to the year, frustrating his attempts to break into the senior side. But after a string of solid performances in the sample, he believes he's ready, if and when, the call-up comes. Goals for the remainder of the year, obviously debut. It's been the goal since I got here from day one and um, sadly hasn't come around yet, but the team's flying, so uh, tough team to crack into. Um, just continue to play good footy and have the trust of the sample and AFL side that I can get it done when I get up to the top level. Now in his second year at the club, Tom is repaying the faith of recruiters, but he concedes he still has much to learn. Areas of the game I'm mainly working on is kicking and 1v1 defending. Um, I feel like my uh, my reading of the game, my aerial stuff is pretty strong, but then just following up with the uh, 1v1 stuff and getting a bit bigger is probably the, the main two things. From Glenelg, they go into attack again. Defensively, the big punch comes from Duday. Yeah. My role's pretty pretty versatile. I've played on talls and smalls and, and mediums. I've played uh, a bit of a running defender and I've also played a bit more lockdown and um, played up the ground, played deep, so I've played a bit of everywhere. The 20 year old is on a mission, absorbing whatever he can in one-on-one -on -one sessions with seasoned defenders like Daniel Talia as well as his coaches. Uh, the main coaches I work with would be Paul Thomas and James Podsy Adley, uh, obviously being the backs coaches there, the ones I spend the most time with. Um, Paul Thomas mainly just during the sample games and training, I just yeah tend to lend to his ear and learn much as, as much as I can. Players certainly speak glowingly of Ryan's methods. When Alana returns after the break, we'll see how downtime means screen time for some players, and we catch up with Matty Robran, who has spent well over half his life at the Crows.
Welcome back. A couple of weeks ago, we saw how some players are gearing up for a Crows Golf Championship. Well, there's another group of players who prefer staying inside and relaxing with video games. But they go to another level by competing online and communicating via headsets. What are you talking about, mate? I'll lead the group, lead the troops. Oh my goodness, we're actually leading the moment. There's plenty of downtime, guys. I mean, we, we like to do productive things in our time as well, but obviously we want to have some fun as well. And guys do different things, but for a couple of blokes at, at the club, we uh, we get on the Xbox. Some guys play PlayStation, but most of us play Xbox. And uh, obviously we try and get away from each other at the footy club, but we find ourselves actually communicating more, playing Xbox and, and doing stuff like that. So that's what we get up to in our spare time. This is, this is sort of my den. I come in here and I actually got um, recovery stuff in here. So um, I chill out and put the, my compression boots on, Aerolax compression boots, sit down. Got the boys, my dogs, they hang out with me too. I'm gonna pin, I'm gonna pin this fever. There's one that wants to remain anonymous. He's, uh, for whatever reason, he doesn't want to be named. Um, but honestly, most of the club, well, not most of them, but most of the young guys play for Xbox Live in particular. We've got a group message. So there's probably eight or nine of us in there. Um, Geordie's in there, Letty's in there, Charlie's in there. Yeah, it's the, the real deal. The nerd got the headphones on, and we pretty much transition from game to games, trying to work out a way to challenge the legacy guys at the footy club. Uh, probably give us a touch up, it'd be a good experience. The way of the world these days, isn't it? Well, now for nearly three years, we've seen Brody Smith get some laughs at his teammate's expense. But today, he has his captain, Taylor Walker, in the hot seat. So we should expect him to show the skippers some respect. Thanks to Revolution Roofing, let's find out. Welcome to the Victory Veranda hot seat. This week, we've got Texan Walker. Um, we've gone to Twitter to get some fans uh, questions this week, Tex. So Ooh. we'll start off with uh, the good old nice and easy one. Where are you from, your club growing up, and who was your favourite player? From Broken Hill, played for the Broken Hill Bulldogs. Um, and who was my favourite player? It was Anthony Modra and James Hurd. All right, on to the fans' questions. Your okay. most used phone app? Ooh, Snapchat. <laughs> favourite crouch? Oh, jeez. Heads or tails? Matt. <laughs> <laughs> the forward line celebrations, how much work goes in? With Eddie, uh, no, nah, not too much. I've got a couple, uh, one with Eddie, one with Charlie. If you were to go on a road trip, mm -hmm. who would you like to go with and who wouldn't you like to go with and reasons? Yeah, I'd chuck you on the list. Or you, four, you would like to. You'd come. Yeah. I'd, I'd have you on the list. You, Laird, because we need a little bloke to pick on. <laughs> um, and probably the Crouch Brothers. You'd chuck in Seedsman and Chaney as well, probably. Cause it's a big car. Yeah, it was, <laughs> we'd chuck Seisman right in the back because if you've got a story, he's got a better one. He wouldn't get the invite. Lynchy because I know he'd want to come, so we just wouldn't <laughs> let him come. All right, last one, um, the Mo. What's going on with the Mo? Gro it was growing. Yeah. i um, just got to keep it manscaped and um, we'll keep it for a little bit longer. Smithers, or not a fan of it? I oh, just, people asked. I'm just asking the okay. questions. All right, thanks for your time, Tekken. Thanks, Smith. Thanks. Good boy. Thanks for coming on. Proud of you. Tex is probably thinking you'll keep. Now, the next segment, Flying the Nest, brought to you by Flight Centre, normally looks at what players have done since they left the club. But Matthew Robran has never left. In fact, he considers himself part of the furniture, but I'm sure he's outlasted all of the furniture in his 26-year career at the Crows. First, of course, as a brilliant player and for the past 17 years as an employee. One Crow's career, but the start of another. No sooner had Matthew Robram played his last game than he took on the job of communications manager. It was a nice transition from finishing footy to working life. I mean, still obviously involved in a footy club. Um, there wasn't the, the yearning and the longing to still want to be playing out there, so I was getting able to get my footy fixed through here, which was great. After a few years, he became a crucial cog behind the scenes as events manager. Uh, your club champions, your auctions, uh, your season launch events, uh, which are all good fun to do, but the other side of, the, of my job um, is also coordinating all the entertainment or pre-match entertainment that happens on the ground at all of our home games. Not surprisingly, the back-to-back -back premierships hold a special place in his memories of 130 games. To be involved or, or lucky enough to be part of those two special days is something I'll never ever forget. But when the 97 premiership players got together recently, those memories had become a little exaggerated. Yeah, we told some good yarns and uh, you know, they were, you know, we're kicking them higher and 
sort of kicking them longer and jumping high with the marks and, uh, and some of Darren Jarman's stories were funnier than what they originally were, so it was great fun. A Crow's flag was inconceivable when Robram was drafted by Hawthorne and debuted in 1991. So I played the one year there, um, decided to return home after the one year because uh, I was homesick and I was young at the time and we were a close family. Sat out of footy for a year because there was a little bit of a contract dispute um, but then the Crows did a deal and, and landed me and I was able to play here from 1993 onwards. After a career long partnership with the Crows he says the club is almost unrecognisable to the one he joined all those years ago. Yeah it's changed but um, the love of the job and the love of the footy club hasn't changed over 20 years though. As a Crows player, Matty mostly wore the 10 Guernsey, the number made famous by his legendary father, Barry, for North Adelaide. Stay with us. Still to come on The Crow Show, it's d turn at the wheel as the four-wheel drive challenge hots up. Now, let's return to the Crow's Kitchen as Richard Douglas and Tony Modra haggle over the hot plates. It's all thanks to Thomas Farms, so let's find out who takes the culinary credit in their two-part cook-off. Well, guys, we're here again thanks to Thomas Farms Kitchen, but this week he's going to get stuck in, get his hands dirty, and we're going to do a cook-off. Well, we've got an issue here. The uh, cooktop is uh, not working, so I'm falling behind the pace. I'm going to have to move station. Well, I think I'm on a roll here because I think old um, Dougie's lagging off a bit here, so... It smells very, very good. It smells like success. Once that meat's cooked through, time to take it out, let it sit aside. Okay, the onions have become a bit translucent there, that's good. So add a bit of stock to that now. A bit of balsamic to that as well. Is that too much? Just. So there we have it with beef and mushroom mash. Looks pretty good, I'm pretty happy with it. Rock and mods, have a look at them, we've done pretty well I reckon. I think so. Yeah, um, we're going to get Matt here from Thomas Farms Kitchen to, uh, to be a fair judge. So let's see what he thinks. Cool, a couple of great plates of food here boys. Uh, it's been a pleasure watching you guys cook. Looks sensational. Good tin of beef. Don't mind that. No contest, no balls will stop there. Really hard to tell but... That one seemed to have a bit more depth of flavour for some reason, and probably a little bit less sauce, so I reckon whoever cooked that one on the left is probably the better one. There you have it. <laughs> well done, Mods. You get the one this one today, yeah, so well done. I'm looking forward to eating it. No, nah, good stuff. Let's get, let's get stuck in. Whether it's gaining experience in the kitchen or another workplace, players are given every opportunity to explore activities away from football. Players such as Hugh Greenwood and Mitch McGovern recently took a walk on the wild side of life to become zookeepers for a day. Yeah, so we're at the Adelaide Zoo in the city. Um, we're doing be a zookeeper for a day. Uh, myself, Hugh Greenwood, Harry Deer and Matt Signorello are down here joining in with uh, Kat who's showing us around a bit. Susie and Brutus. Morning. Pretty unique experience for us guys playing footy to come across here and be hands on, sweep up a bit of poo and learning to feed them and learning the names of the animals has been pretty nice. Oh. <laughs> you don't want to be putting your hand in that now. Chuck it. You've got big teeth, so yep, just chuck it in. Ugh. There you go. Ah. At the moment they're cleaning up what we call the hippo lockaway, so they're cleaning up last night's poo basically. <laughs> it's been a little bit of squirting of each other, which we do try to avoid, but no, they've done a pretty good job. <laughs> the stench of the hippo enclosure was disgusting. Nothing I've ever smelled before, and when you look at it, you wouldn't think it would smell. It looks like, just like hay. Huey Green was really pulling his weight, really questioning Matt and uh, Harry's efforts so far, so I think they've got to step up. Well, as we know, Richard Douglas is no slouch behind the wheel, taking an early lead in our four-wheel drive challenge before his time was matched by Sam Jacobs. This week, it's David McKay's turn in the Toyota Hilux, with good friend Andy Otten in the back seat. Can he succeed in catching the leaders when others have failed? You guys done much four-wheel drive before? Zero. Zero? That's the perfect way to start. <laughs> 
Yeah, it was good fun. Um, it was uh, interesting. I, uh, no, it was really enjoyable, but uh, just glad the car is unbreakable because uh, there was a few times I scraped it and felt like uh, bits and pieces were going to fall off, but uh, in the end we got through in one piece, which was the main objective. Well, I just need to get the like you can and when you're in the air, there's no grip. I think I thought I was a bit jumpy actually in the back seat. I just felt he's, he was sort of climbing all over me. I think he wanted to get his hands on the steering wheel and stop me from doing a few things. But um, no, it was good fun. He he was uh, you know giving me a bit of stick, and um, I'm just you know at this point I'm not in the back seat with him, bound to retaliate. <laughs> so my thrashing that on. <laughs> yes. Well, probably the bit where we sort of went up on our on our side almost on two wheels, and then. Um, I did give it a bit of a scrape though coming out of that, so I probably need to work on my, um, I guess my entry out of the uh, corner. You made it. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, we have a new leader. DMAC blitzed the course. His time of 2 minutes 38 just shade of Dougie and Sauce, so with only a few weeks left, it's game on. Who's going to be among the final challenges? Still ahead, we have to find our face in the crowd. And fans have their say on one of football's vexed issues. If you haven't already joined the Crows on social media, make sure you do. Our Facebook, Twitter and Instagram sites are the fastest growing platforms in the AFL. And our Twitter following, for example, is the largest in Australian club sport. Who are the most loved Crows, both past and present? The team at AFL Media asked fans this question and the results probably won't surprise anyone. And Claude the Crow is at it again. This time he's showing off his many walks. Well, one of the traditional highlights of our game, the centre bounce, has certainly come in for some scrutiny this season. So what do the fans think? Should it stay or should it go? Keep the centre bounce, I'm a ruckman, so I would say keep the rest centre bounce all the way. Definitely stay, I'm a traditionalist, I this way it's meant to be. I think it's a tradition, but it doesn't really matter in the end game. Like, they're both going to get a bit of the ball, they're both going to go for it either way. Absolutely, let's keep it with traditional. No, just, just teach the umpires how to bounce, that might be the way to go. No, I think the centre bounce, I like the centre bounce. Oh, I think we should, should keep the centre bounce because it would probably bring more action into the ruckman. It's like one of the central parts of the game, definitely. No, keep the centre bounce, it's traditional football. Brought up. Yeah. Good. I reckon time to change. Keep it. Yeah, keep it. We'll keep yeah. it. <laughs> now, speaking of the fans, let's find one who deserves to win a prize. Today, the lucky person is you. If you recognise yourself, contact the club by 5pm next Wednesday. Be ready with some photo ID and a merchandise pack will be all yours. Looking ahead to next week, we'll discover Cam Ellis Yolman's unique way of remaining involved with the club as he recovers from injury. Get back Hunt! Work back! Work! Get the ball, quick turn, have a look and then you can still give a hand we'll see after your quick turn. That just about wraps up our show today, brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. Now don't forget, visit the Crows website, afc.com.au, for all the latest news and exclusive stories like those we've brought you today. Thanks for your company and we look forward to catching up again next Sunday at 11.30 on 7. Of course, that'll be ahead of the big clash with Collingwood at the G. We'll see you then. Bye for now.